Welcome to Flip Bike, where we find great deals on used bikes, fix them up, and flip them for a profit. I'm your host, Seth. Let's go have a look at today's bike. All right, so I found a vintage Diamondback. I'd call it a hardtail, but by today's standards, it's more of like a commuter or maybe even a gravel bike. It was listed for $70, and although it looks like a complete piece of crap, I know better. It was a good bike back in its day. It's up in Weaverville. Let's go get it. If you're gonna meet a stranger from the internet somewhere, you should meet in a public setting, someplace with some foot traffic in case they're there to murder you. She wanted to meet at the post office, but the post office is closed, so it's just a big empty lot. Hopefully, Oscar's got my back. Thank you. It's poorly maintained, it's old, it's dirty, it looks terrible. This is gonna be a fantastic flip bike. For its day, this was a good bike. It's filled with Shimano quick release levers. The front wheel, the rear wheel, the seat post, these were more expensive to add to bikes and it made them easier to maintain. And bikes that are designed to be easy to maintain are meant to be ridden. It's also got some parts that were really good and even innovative for their day, like this Shimano BioPace chain ring. This is a set of three oblong or oval chain rings is supposed to make it easier to climb hills. But I could see why it was listed for $70. It doesn't work, none of the gears shift, brakes are not adjusted properly, it's dirty, the grips are cracked. Just by cleaning this bike and changing the cables and making it work, we could probably sell it for more than double what it was listed for and we could market it as a vintage bike, not an old piece of crap bike, but a bike with like hipster points. And all these scratches and scuffs on the bike, well, that's patina. Now, I would never recommend using a pressure washer on a bike, but I'm gonna be real careful. Whoa, you see how fast that thing spun? All right, so we cleaned the frame and all the parts through and through. This looks like a completely different bike. Now we get to move on to the fun stuff. It doesn't shift gears. Now that we have all the gears and cables off of it, the only problem it could be is the shifter itself. And when I push this down, it's not clicking, it's not moving right. The one on the left doesn't work great, but it works. We're gonna have to dig in here and see what's going on in these shifters. These two levers are rubbing against each other. It's this bottom lever that's bent down. I'm gonna just try and bend it back. And if something breaks, we'll panic. All right, we got clicking. That was an easy fix. Check it out. Whoa! You want to know a secret? I used goof off on this. There was something gummy inside the shifter that the penetrating fluid was just not helping with. So now we are in business. We should take the headset apart. We did blast this thing with a pressure washer after all. Man, it's a pleasure working on good parts. These are really old, but everything moves really well. Nothing's rusty and messed up. And these are normal ball bearings in here. So we can repack these with brand new grease and just get it feeling a little smoother. Nice and clean. Here are some real basic grips that we don't have to pay for. They came off an old bike. They're used, but they're in great condition. And the ends on the bar are fine, so we don't have to worry about anybody getting core sampled. You see, you start trying to push a grip on, only goes so far, and then it just kind of goes, it's like pushing rope. So, 
get your air compressor under there. And that's it, we got brand new grips on here. Changing out cables on a bike is one of the best ways to make it run like new. Shifter cables, brake cables, all that stuff. And if you've ever looked online for a set of cables, they cost a lot. But there's a way cheaper way to buy cables, especially if you do this stuff a lot like I do, and that's by the roll. For years and years, I've just been pulling shifter cables out of this thing, so each one costs me pennies on the dollar. Definitely jumps a few gears. One, two, three, and it's pretty much, that's it. There are teeth missing from the gears in both shift levers. It skips gears one way. I have a one, two, three shifter right here. I've got a seven speed right here, which is what we need. The only problem is the shifters are built into the levers here. And I don't have replacement brake levers. I have like hydraulic disc brakes for mountain bikes. This is becoming a really expensive headache. This bike did not turn out to be the amazing deal that I thought it was. This little pad right here on the brake lever is where the shifter attached. If I do a nice neat little cut right along there, it'll be just like a brake lever with no shifter. It will not look janky and it'll work nicely. So that could have been a disaster, but turns out these fit together rather nicely. Here at Berm Peak Customs, we're custom. The old tires were pretty dry rotted, so I found some cheap ones that we can replace them with. They're not special, they don't have some gnarly tread, but they're new, they're safe, they don't smell bad. Okay, so the original chain was on the bike. I think it's literally the chain that came with it, and it's really stretched out and worn, really dirty. I got a new chain. We are going to size it by just popping a link out here, and there she goes. Now we can install it. So now that we have the chain on, it's the moment of truth. Does this shift right? Perfect. All right, now for the front. Perfect. Okay, so we're almost done here, but the bike needs a couple of obvious things. First and most importantly, valve caps. I tried to find something that would match this 90s color over here, and this is as close as I could get. So let's get in these valve caps. And I don't know, you think we should replace the seat? Uh, back in the 90s, gel seats were all the rage. You'd walk into any bike shop and there were gel seats everywhere. But the thing about gel seats is they weren't very good saddles. A good saddle should be smooth so that your clothing slides across it, but gel seats all had this kind of material that gripped your clothing. And so when you find them today, they all look like this. The other problem with gel seats is that they absorbed water. So if you were actually using the bike for transportation, it just turned to complete garbage. So we're gonna change out the seat and I just so happen to have a free one, not period correct, but we're gonna put on the seat. This looks like a way different bike than we started with. Brakes work, gears work, time for a test ride. I think this shifts smoother than my mountain bike.
I've seen people take pictures of the bike laying on the ground. You can tell they just want the bike out of their life if you see that. If you have a good camera, use the good camera. And if you have a cell phone, clean off the lens with your shirt or something before you start taking pictures with it. First thing you need though is a good prop stick. All right, so that's a wrap. Let's get this thing listed. I tried to give the pertinent information up front and then give kind of a marketing pitch for the bike. Vintage mountain slash gravel bike will work for riders five feet tall to five foot seven. This was a great bike 30 years ago and will continue to be for the next 30. This chromoly steel mountain bike has been expertly restored with new tires, chain, cables, shifters, saddle, grips, and deep cleaning through and through. If you need a reliable commuter bike, gravel rig, or just want a conversation starter with lots of character, this will turn heads. The paint tells a story, but the ride is smooth and the entire bike feels and works like new. Okay, so bike has been listed for about three days and I got a few inquiries. If we left it up for another week or so, pretty confident it would sell, but I just took the bike downtown, rode it around for a little bit, and I'm starting to think that the right buyer for this bike is me. If this series grows legs, I can't do that. I can't keep all the bikes. We have to sell them. But this time, I just, I really want to keep it. It's a vintage Diamondback. It's steel. It's a size small, which is my size. When I do need a bike for riding around town, I don't want to take my gravel bike, which is worth a lot and can get stolen. So I am delisting it and integrating it into our fleet. With that, here's the breakdown. We purchased this bike for $70, and in hindsight, we might have overpaid a little bit. This would have been better at 50, given the fact that the shifters were beyond repair. We put new tires on it, but I found a really good deal on two tires for $24. New cables and housing came from my own bulk supply, so we'll call it $5. New chain, $16. Bottle cage, $5.50. And a water bottle, $2.83. The seat, the shifter mod, and the miscellaneous parts that we put on the bike were from my parts bin, and so they didn't cost us anything. And so we put a total of $123.33 into the bike. We sold it for $0 with a profit of negative $123.33. So no, we did not technically sell this bike in an online marketplace, but we did buy it, fix it up, and list it. And now we have a pretty cool bike as part of the fleet. Hopefully next time we can make more profit than negative $123.33. I'll see you next time on Flip Bike.